morning, everyone. I'm Ken Fadner, chairman of Media Post. Welcome to Asheville, North Carolina. Anybody from North Carolina in the room? Anybody from a surrounding state? Everybody came a long distance, it turns out. <laughs> but uh, I hope you will find your trip worthwhile. This is, of course, the Grove Park Inn. Uh, <laughs> Not that you don't know that by now, but I'm going to read a little bit about it in case you haven't read about it. Uh, just briefly here, it was built by Edwin Wiley Grove, owner of a pharmaceutical company. They made quinine or something and brom bromide. Um, and um, he arrived in Asheville in 1900. It was designed by an amateur architect who, along with Mr. Grove, who, helped, who aided in the, de in the design. The goal was to use all local and natural material. I think you can see that they've done that with those giant rocks all over the place. And this has been, ma this has been maintained right up to the present, uh, faithfully by the Omni people, not turning it into, not tearing it down and turning it into something else. Um, over the years, as you can see from the pictures on the wall, a who's who of the famous and infamous of the contemporary life uh, have stayed here right up to the present, in, in which the famous and maybe infamous, of the uh, publishing world have gathered here for the Fall Publishing Insider Summit. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. October, it turns out, is a difficult month. <laughs> uh, we have not done a, sh a summit in October before, um, and um, people are, you know, this is a difficult time, so uh, in terms of year-end planning, next year planning, and we appreciate the fact that you've taken your time to come here. This is our second Publisher Insider Summit. But we've been doing summit type retreats for over 10 years around uh, America at the best resorts in the country. And um, you may have come uh, to some of them or heard of some of them. We started with email and search 10 years ago, and we've done them in mobile and social and uh, cross-channel marketing and uh, a host and variety of subjects. Um, and uh, this uh, starting uh, in March or April, we, uh, this year we did our first publisher summit. But um, we've been covering the, uh, tr uh, we started covering the transition of the publishing world to a digital world uh, in 2005 with the launch of our weekly online publishing insider. And um, in uh, 2008, we did our first OMA publishing, OMA Publish Conference uh, in New York uh, and uh, have continued uh, covering uh, publishing, the publishing side of the uh, advertising, marketing, and media world, uh, we've continued with the launch in July of our Publishers Daily. Uh, how many in the room get Publishers Daily? If you don't, go to Media Post and sign up. Uh, and uh, so, um, you know, welcome to the, uh, the summit. You're here to learn, of course, but uh, don't forget to uh, participate. Uh, we have uh, round tables at the end of each morning. It's a great way to meet your fellow attendees. We have activities this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon that also, um, in addition to being fun, they offer you the opportunity to uh, meet and get closer to the people who are here with you. The idea is to learn from each other over time and to get to know each other and main, make contacts, business contacts, as well as uh, friend, friends, in fact, uh, into the future. So um, today our activities are, uh, uh, golf, biking, and uh, the house tour of the uh, Vanderbilt Mansion, Biltmore. Um, uh, it's magnificent. It's the largest house, I think, in America. Is that true? Does anybody know? Who said yes? Thank you. <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for that authority. Uh, it's, uh, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's a magnificent. It's kind of unbelievable. Uh, built, um, I'm not actually sure, late 1800s, early 1900s. And um, it's well worth uh, a visit. So we have a house tour, and there's also a biking tour on the grounds of the Vanderbilt Mansion today. And then there's golf surrounding the Omni here. Uh, by the way, it's supposed to be sunny and 73 this afternoon. So, I mean, you couldn't tell that by this morning. Have faith. Make your commitment to join the tours, uh, even though it doesn't look like a day you want to go outside right now. Um, it's free to VIPs, of course. Uh, so... Um, you know, we take care of everything but your golf clubs. If you have to rent the golf clubs, uh, that's on you. Um, and um, don't, 
a minor note, but we've uh, made t-shirts so you can m remember your uh, visit to the conference. They're out at the registration desk. And anything you might need, uh, has, don't hesitate to ask uh, Jun Mien, who's out at the registration desk, or any of the Media Post staffers who are here. So uh, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, uh, Post Up is a, a presenting sponsor. I think we're hearing from them tomorrow at lunch. Is that true? Yes, and um, then we also uh, enjoy the support of Veric Media Management, Nativo, Index Exchange, Social Flow, and Altitude Digital. So we'll get on with the show. I want to introduce our MC, uh, Eric Sass. He's also been uh, the uh, co-programmer of the show, along with Steve Smith, our editorial director of events. Uh, Eric uh, recently was promoted to the editor of Publishers Daily. He's been a reporter for Media Force for, I'm thinking, 10 years. But am I wrong? Almost 10. Almost 10. So a, a, a bright and uh, engaging gentleman. I hope you'll uh, give him your support. This is his first time emceeing a show. He's both nervous and also uh, ready to take it over and run with it. Uh, he'll do a great job. Eric? Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to fabulous uh, Asheville and the Grove Park Inn. Uh, and thank you for making it out here. I know it's a little bit of a trek, but I think you'll find it's well worth it. I mean, I think the, the venue is obviously very beautiful. Um, just don't, it's one thing, don't think about The Shining. Just don't think about The Shining. Um, and the, uh, but the, so publishers have a lot on their plate. Um, I think that's pretty, been pretty clear over the last decade. I've been writing about it. That's what I, joined Media Post to start. Um, when I started with Media Post, I was writing about newspapers and magazines. Um, and I'm a sort of, a, I've been a writer my whole life, and so I had a natural sort of interest in that. Um, but I don't think many media watchers would dispute that the rise of digital media has really thrown publishing in general for a loop. Um, it, it's getting better now, but uh, there was a period where it was looking pretty grim, and I sort of, unfortunately, I had the job of documenting it um, <laughs> day by day as things went down. But just to uh, give you a picture, just to sort of, I, I think these figures are probably familiar to most people, but just to sort of sketch out the challenge uh, that publishers have faced and the sort of the environment that they've had to deal with um, from 2006 to 2013, uh, total newspaper advertising revenues uh, plunged from 49.3 billion to 23.6 billion dollars. That is a uh, more than a half decline in less than a decade. Uh, over the same period, the published, according to the Published Information Bureau, uh, total magazine ad pages fell from around 245,000 to 146,000. That's a 40% a decline, and those. You can't have a decline like that without significant impacts on uh, your bottom line and the valuation of companies. To give just one example, I'm picking on someone who's not here, but um, Gannett saw its total market capitalization fall by half from 14 billion to 7 billion. Um, this is, you, this is and, and of course the effects then were felt in things like newsrooms. Um, as a reporter, that's a particularly sensitive area for me. Um, but, you know, it's, again, it was a little bit grim having to write about layoffs and, you know, veteran journalists having to uh, take buyouts and things like that. Um, but, so, I've painted a grim picture so far and I realize that, but it's, I think we're finally seeing a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel and maybe turning a corner, um, especially in the last year or two. There's, uh, be, as the elements of a sustainable business model appear to be finally emerging and maybe even cohering, um, there's a whole new generation of pure play digital publishers. Um, you've, we all know names like Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Mashable, Vox, um, and while not everyone has succeeded, there's some that sort of didn't quite launch or failed to launch, um, I think just the fact that some of them are thriving shows that publishing can indeed um, survive the decline and maybe even the eventual extinction of print advertising and it can thrive in a purely digital world. Uh, there's all sorts of 
reasons for hope, uh, new revenue streams coming online, uh, new formats, the rise of mobile, the rise of social. Uh, social media gives you access to huge audiences, unprecedented. Facebook has almost 1.5 billion members. That's, in terms of reach, that's mind-boggling. Uh, mobile allows you to reach consumers throughout the day. Uh, there's potentially more engagement than ever um, as we all carry these smartphones around and use, use them during dwell time, commute time, five minutes, standing in line for five minutes, you can go to your favorite publisher. Um, and new formats like native advertising rely more than ever on publishers for quality execution. Um, I mean, so there's a lot of reasons to be hopeful. And I think we're, we're finally, after the huge dislocation, which part of it was not even due to media trends, but the economic downturn, there's many reasons to be hopeful. Um, yeah, and legacy publishers haven't lagged in innovation either. I should, I mentioned the digital pure play publishers, but uh, Forbes gets well over half its advertising revenues from digital now, powered by native, I believe. Um, and the New York Times Company just last week disclosed a sweeping plan, sweepingly ambitious plan, I should say, to double its digital revenues from $400 million this year to $800 million by the end of the decade, which is, um, that's, you know, as they say, that's almost a billion dollars and a billion here, a billion there, uh, pretty soon you're talking real money in the words of Everett Dirksen, the senator. Um, so we're still not there though. That's the thing. There are still some obstacles and some challenges that remain and uh, ironically they have to do with the very areas of promise that I located. Social media partnerships are great but you also risk up giving up your control um, and diluting your brand. Uh, mobile is an amazing way to reach people, but um, publishers are tearing their hair out figuring out how to monetize it because you have such a part in part because you have such a small uh, footprint to work with. Um, so we have a lot to talk about um, and we have a lot to do uh, to sort of move the industry forward. And on that note, I will uh, stop talking and we'll start. Um, discussing. Uh, so my first, our first presentation um, is Christian Basler of Bauer Excel Media. Uh, we're going to do uh, a one-on-one -on -one interview and kind of see where Bauer is going and it's very interesting. We've already talked about it obviously. Um, I can say it's quite, um, quite innovative. So if you want to come on up.